In this bulletin, frontliners face challenges. More hospitalization of COVID cases. And police to relook at operations. From the studios of FBC Suva, Atera Lendua. Good morning, or oh, good afternoon rather. Women at the front line have complained of alleged sexual assault by those they work with. The Fiji Women's Crisis Center coordinator Shimima Ali says they have noticed this growing issue during this pandemic. While some have lodged complaints, there are others who chose to stay silent in the fear of losing their jobs and marriage. Frontline workers are also putting in complaints about sexual harassment by uh, people who they are working with at the front line. You know, even there, we should all be safe because frontline workers are so important and they, you know, and they're always putting their lives in danger. So they have this add ons also. 10 out of the 254 COVID-19 patients currently in hospital in the Central Division are critical, and 46 patients are considered to be in severe condition. Hospital admi admission data for the Western Division is awaiting an update. 79 patients are admitted at the Fremat Field Hospital, and 175 admitted at CWM Hospital, St. Giles, and McCoy. A total of 5,586 individuals were screened and 766 swabbed at the Ministry of Health stationary screening clinics in the 24 hours that ended at 8 a.m. yesterday. And the national seven-day average daily test positivity is at 32.0%. The Fiji police will now be working to be tough, smart and friendly with how COVID operations will be carried out. Speaking to FBC News from Quarantine, Commissioner of Police Brigadier General Siti Veni Giliho says he has had several virtual meetings with Divisional Command and Deputy Commissioner of Police Rusiati Tundravu since his arrival. Gilior believes police can be tougher with enforcement, especially when dealing with the seen to be uncontrollable loitering. He adds that directives have been sent out and people can expect to see changes in police operations. Officers are also being reminded to have a level of understanding with people during this difficult time. Being tough on enforcement with a complex COVID and other anxiety fueled, uh, fueled situations uh, that we are going through at the moment. Uh, we need to be smart with how we operate and, we, and commit resources, including manpower. And friendly with how we deal with people with a heart of empathy with the stressful situation that we are all in at the moment. The Fiji National Provident Fund has appointed Wiliame Wontanaivalu as the new chief executive. FNPF chair Dakshesh Patel says Wontanaivalu has shown innovative and decisive direction, which is reflected in the fund's overall investment achievements. The new FNPF CEO enabled the fund to attain the highest levels of growth in the investment portfolio, averaging 11.5% and totaling. $2.8 billion with a total investment income of $1.97 billion. Wondanaivalu has been acting CEO since February following the resignation of Chaoji Kuroi. The no jab, no entry rule at the Suva Municipal Market will be enforced by October. Suva City Council Special Administrator's Chair Isikeli Tikundondo says they're working closely with the government to ensure this rule is executed efficiently and effectively. He adds to date, 84% of permanent market vendors at the Suva market have been vaccinated, while the remaining 16% are unvaccinated vendors have been sent home. Tikundondoa has also rejected rumors that some people are entering the market using fake vaccination cards. There has not been any incident yet. <coughs> However, uh, with this rumor, we have picked up uh, the uh, checking of all this ID card to ensure that there is no uh, counterfeit or people uh, duplicating or photocopying uh, IDs. 
with the rapidly changing COVID-19 situation in Fiji and around the globe, ANZ today reinforced that it is ready and willing to help customers financially impacted by the pandemic. ANZ Fiji country head Rabi Yazbak says they are all aware of the significant impact COVID-19 is having on Pacific economies and the global uncertainty it has created. Yabak says, as Fiji's largest bank, they're here to help customers through these difficult times, adding that they know the weighty responsibility on their shoulders to act in a way that supports Fijian people and communities through this crisis. He says ANZ has been supporting customers in Fiji with hardship options such as payment deferrals, interest only and loan term extensions, as well as having the critical conversations to ensure customers can navigate through the pandemic. While the number of customers needing assistance has increased, ANZ says it is well placed to support customers through this last leg of the pandemic. And to our latest COVID-19 update for today, Fiji had 1,187 new COVID-19 infections for the period ending at 8 a.m. yesterday. 387 cases are from the West and 800 from the Central Division. The Ministry of Health also recorded 11 new COVID-19 deaths between July 31st and August 4th. Nine deaths were in the Central Division and two in the West. Fiji has recorded 333,850 uh, cases since April this year. There are now 22,658 active cases in isolation and 10,848 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 272. The vaccination campaign also continues around the country. As of yesterday, 498,680 or 85% of the population have received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 164,974 or 28% have received their second dose. The five most vaccinated areas include Ba, Rewa and Nandronga, which are now 100% first jabbed. Next are Nandi and Naitasiri. Rewa also tops the list of the most second jabbed province. Up ahead, Nasoko aim, sets aim. And Belarusian sprinter moves to Austria. Stay with us. Welcome back. Kalione Nasoko has set his aims of what he wants to achieve next in his rugby sevens career. I'd love to represent Fiji again in the World Series. Also with the World Cup and Commonwealth approaching, I wish to don the white jumper again. I played in 2018, but the team lost in both. If the current squad can win gold, I believe we can also win medals in the Commonwealth and Rugby World Cup. Fijiana 7's captain Rusila Nangasau is content with how far the team has come and the achievement at the Olympics. Though the team missed out on a gold medal spot after going down to New Zealand in the semi-final, they still had a chance at a medal. Nangasau says she reminded the girls of the situation in Fiji and how crucial the final game against Great Britain would be. We were aiming that morning uh, for, to go and uh, play in the semi-final and try to win the ma gold medal, but it didn't went uh, away. Uh, it is what it is, uh, semi-final. One is going to win, one is going to lose. 
uh, we went back to our changing room, we talked about it, and from there uh, we know we didn't get the goal. But for us, uh, going back and talk about our mistakes, trying to improve, improve from there. The Belarusian sprinter who has been the center of attention at the Olympics has gone to Austria. She had sought refuge at the Polish embassy. Mostly fine conditions prevailing over most parts of the country. It will remain cool at night. That's FBC News Now. Join us again for our one-hour major bulletin at 7 p.m. And be sure to download our FBC app to access the latest in news and sports and live radio broadcasts from any of our six FBC radio stations. Stay safe and good afternoon.